All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Esau TV for the Black Monster Cup. Getting underway with our second game today. I know it's it's been it's been a while already, and we're only into our second game. But let's see how this one goes here. It's going to be an interesting one to say nonetheless. Here we have H2K Gamers going up against Ultravirus. We're going to see if he's going to actually take their win to go into the winner's bracket to play against Unicorns of Love, and who will, well, unfortunately, lose and go to play against Ninjas and Pajamas and. Let me go ahead and introduce the lineups for you guys at home. We might be too familiar with either of these teams. On HDK, we have Odomane, we have Trashy, we have well, Dopa God, which is for Bivim, uh, Hajarnman, and We Will Failure. And on the side of Ultravirus, we have Karisas, Alunir, Mazarin, Deadly Brother, and Cookie. People with names that have food in them, or names about food, makes me so hungry. Anyway, so let's see how this game, this game goes here, because we're going to have a Grogus in the top lane running that top part. We're going to have a Rengar, more importantly, in the jungle. I want to see how that one's going to go here. And right now, see a little bit of aid coming out. The pink ward going to be spotted. And HGK are going to defend their ward here that they actually have. <sighs> Currently down. There, right, right there. So we have a pause. Um, apparently for Biven, or Febby, that would have called him. Apparently something's wrong. Not sure what it is. Don't know how long it's going to last. But apparently they're ready now. So I guess the uh, well, the three minutes of pause earlier wasn't enough. But they should be good to go here. So just wait on the ready up for the side of Ultravirus. There it is. And we are back into the game here. And obviously, coming up after this game, it will be Ninja Pajamas up against the loser of this one. And then after that, we'll be directly going into the winner's bracket game, which will be Unicorns of Love up against the winner of this. And then we'll end up the night with the losers of the Unicorns of Love game versus the winners of this versus the winners of the losers game of Ninja Pajamas versus the loser of this. A little bit confusing. A little bit confusing. Yes, I know. But bear with me here. I have that lovely graphic to kind of show it visually for you guys at home. But as you can see, um, Trashy a little bit slower at his blue buff than we see uh, Alunir. Already able to pick it up, already able to hit level 2. And start to rotate through his jungle to go towards that red buff here. For Bivin though, middle. Up against Mazarin. Mazarin, I think he's, uh, not mistaken, he's one of the best, if not the best mid laners in, uh, CI in the CIS region. So really curious to see how well he's going to do here. Obviously he's had some experience on the big stage at the World Finals in Season 3. I don't actually know the, the status of the CIS wildcard tournament that's coming up at Gamescom. Um, I don't know if Ultravirus are in that one, but he might have a second chance and actually get in there. Anyway, we can see Wheel of Failure and Jarman bottom. Being really aggressive. Level 2 now as they hit it. 11 to 5 CS. And Wheel of Failure just trying to harass Cookie back a little bit here. Make it a little bit harder for Deadly to last hit. And well, they're doing it here, as you can see. Deadly down about half HP. And the hook, well, it will not connect here. So, a little bit of a good start here. A little bit of an early good start as well on the side of H2K as they have a 400 gold lead. I'm actually not sure how they have a 3 to 400 gold lead. It's probably because the waves are stacked up right now. That, that has to be it here. As we do have, oh, Deadly Brother getting very low on the bottom side. Cooking, unfortunately, will not connect on to the hook. Really, people. This is why I can't leave chat on. So people like that. Anyways, we do have the bubble landing yet again here. Cookie he will be forced back yet again. Alanir already forced to go down towards this bottom side of the map here. With Deadly being well, denied now a full wave, it seems, if they can shove it in just quick enough. And it looks like they should be able to deny quite a bit here. So a great, strong start coming out of H2K. And that cool lead is getting uh, well, even heftier for them. And um, out on the Gragas. We've seen a lot of top Gragas uh, lately here. You can see, able to trade very well. It was sustained quite a bit here, and Carissa, he's having a tough time. He's, he's, he's kept up with CS though, more importantly. That's that's the big thing here. And as long as he can keep doing that, he will uh, be very impactful as the game goes on. I am worried about though about one thing. The ultimate out of Gragas can be very deadly. Not to mention, when Trashy gets to level 6, it becomes disgusting because he can gank middle like it's nobody's business. He can snare Mazarim, follow up with a gold card, and you have the potential burst. But then again, he has the ultimate, so he should be able to survive most of it. I'll obviously see here uh, if the ganks finally do come around in just the next few minutes. And again, bottom lane, still a bit aggressive. I, I want to say Lucian should be able to out 
damage Corky early on, especially with that Nami support having the extra sustain. I mean, you look. A little bit of miscommunication from Deadly Brother backing away while Cookie lands the hook here. Here comes the gang on the top side. Odo getting caught out, does get first blooded. And that will go over to Kurasus. And now uh, Cookie will be taken out as well. So both junglers make it a big play. They even forced the flash out of trash on that one. But first blood still, more importantly, going over to uh, Kurasus. So he was already kept up in CS. Gonna get a little bit more here. He has extra money from that now. And it's gonna make it a little bit harder for Odo to really go head to head. But Odo, though, teleporting back in. Not gonna miss a single CS here, or at least miss the experience off of it. And that is exactly what you need to do. Great use out of that teleport. Does return with an extra Doran's ring and the uh, health crystal here. Meantime, Eleanor actually going for an aggressive ward. Going to be able to spot out that blue buff when it comes back up here in just a few. And Deadly, again, forced out of lane here. So we're starting to see our big snowball in the bottom lane. 33 to 22, 11 CS difference. Yeah, if you're like, Jason, that's 11 CS. That's not that bad. For five and a half minutes in, it's not a good sign. It is, I mean, it's not bad as in like these guys are way better than I am, but it's not good for him at all because he's constantly being pushed out. He's level three against level four. Here comes Trashy with the flash snare and he picks up the kill. I did not expect that to come in. You can probably hear that my voice and they pick up a second kill. This time going over to Trashy yet again. So he's now two and zero. He's level five and he might be level six actually when Mazarin gets back to lane. That could be very, very devastating. Mazarin though has flash still up. But again, back to the point where I was saying before. Almost double the CS here for her, Jarman. They have sustain. He has a lot of money to spend. Well, not a lot of money to spend, 800 gold, but he'll be able to pick up probably like boots or something or maybe work towards that phase here. But he's pushing Deadly Brother out time and time again. Level five, level three. And this is just gonna become worse. He's actually going for a Brutalizer, it looks like. Hmm, okay. And if Brother doesn't get any help here from uh, Alanir, then they're gonna start to get snowballed against. I mean, Still 10 CS behind here. Uh, I would imagine uh, Jarman should miss too, uh, miss too much CS. And you have Trashy bottom lane again, who could potentially go for a gate. There's no flash on either of them bottom. And you can see Deadly Brother instantly heading back to base here, realizing he cannot stick around. Will buy up, I believe, towards his face here in just a few seconds. Now we're starting to see a little bit of a roaming support. Cookie looking for a gate middle. He will spot a pink ward, and he will take that down here. So, great little start for him. A little bit of a roaming support, but... Looks like he's just going to go back towards his own jungle and just uh, stick around there here for a little bit. Alright, so... A little bit of a slower start this game. Well, we've seen how slow starts can go. We had a little bit of a slow start with the uh, Unicorns Love versus NIP game here. Or just, just prior. And that got explosive very quickly. Trashy spotted out doing his own blue buff here, but again... Alanir not in a position to stop it. And that will be for Vivin picking up his own blue here. So we'll return that with the mid lane. Trashy now level 6 as well. And I'm curious to see where his gank's going to go if he does use it. He's going to keep farming up here. Keep his levels. He's behind in CS, yes. But in terms of total gold, he's still ahead just by about 100 here. And Odo on the top lane, he's still building up a lead here with that harass he can do. 67 to 48. Kyrgyzus obviously going for that Spectral's Cow to obviously sustain a little bit more in lane here, but he still takes a lot of damage, as you can see. Odo is, uh, he's almost impossible to gank right now. Uh, he does have a word finally down the river, which is how he got ganked last time. I don't think he had any vision in that one. But I don't imagine that happened a second time. Trashy pick up his own red buff here. Alanir picking up his, uh, well, Wolves. And Deadly Brother again, level 5, yes. But very low on HP. All it takes is one more anything to land on him. He's going to be taken down here. That turret already very low on life. Again, Alanir hasn't visited this bottom lane to help out. And that is not a good sign here. Trashy going to be sneaking around towards the bottom lane. He will be spot up by the ward, though. That won't be a successful gank, but they can take the turret if they want. Or they can go for Dragon. They have no pink ward, but they have a sweeping lens up on a We Will Failure. So they should be able to create the vision. They should be able to have this ward here to spot anyone coming in from the side of uh, Ultra Virus. They have a ward here to spot Alanir coming in from the side as well. And they're going straight for Trashy. He's going to get snared up as well. And he actually will land a snare. Yep, uh, he had to get onto Alanir. He has to rip up. He has a slow from Nami. He picks up his third kill. A fantastic job by him. And that most certainly will be Dragon picked up here now for H2K. So this game getting a little bit snowbally. Only nine minutes in, but it's three to one. And they have almost a, well, almost a 3,000 gold lead at 2.5 currently. Oh, that dragon coming in, it should hit 3k. Almost. <laughs> Alright, so... Actually, no, it is over 3k. I'm stupid. 3.5. Anyways. Odo still building up a lane in the top lane. Carissas... I mean... It's just so weird because... If you think about it, Trashy's been middle. He's been bottom. 
And he's picked up three kills from all this. alanir has been top once. He netted a kill, yes. But he's only ganked once. He hasn't been to the zone lanes. He hasn't helped bottom. He's not really helping out middle too much. A little bit of lead building up here for Forbiv. And currently, Telp, we're going to be coming in from Carisus. But again, it's a Gragas. Easy to run away from that one. We'll have that Catalyst done when he goes back to base. Even close to that Rod of Ages as well, if he keeps farming up here. And we can see... What is Trashy going to build? We saw, you know, back in the day, I think back at Intel Extreme Masters Singapore, back in Season 8, we saw a lot of Rengar in the top lane built straight tank. I wonder actually what uh, Trashy is going to build here on this Rengar in the jungle. Has he a uh, Spirit of the Elder Lizard built up? Has a Ruby Crystal as well? No, no, don't worry, we didn't see you just completely fail that combo, but again, we're Viven level 8, 9 now. And hasn't ganked just yet. He hasn't needed to. That's the weird thing. Like, he hasn't really needed to really gank anything just yet. Because every lane's winning. Top up in CS, bottom up in CS. Jarman has, well, 1,100, 1,600 gold, sorry, to spend. And they're forcing Brother out every single time. They're even letting the wave sit here. They're not pushing it. They're keeping it on their own side of the map here. And that's forcing Deadly to, you know, roam somewhere else. He's got to go middle. He's got to push some other lanes. He's got to get his CS, his money somewhere. Let's see if we can do it middle. Obviously, uh, Forbidden will be back. We'll have enough ability power to clear out these waves very, very quickly. And we're going to try to tank it up for a little bit as well here. And they're going to have to back off. Alder taking half HP from two turret hits. Obviously, remember the turret changes did come into effect in this uh, last patch as well. So they stack much quicker. Up to 75% in two hits, I believe it is. And don't deadly. Now forced to go top side. This is... This is this is how bad the game's going for him, is that he's been forced to go middle, forced to go top, just to get some CS. They actually are going to be able to push the top lane, though. And they might be able to get the turret down from this. So you might be able to get uh, be able to net a little bit of gold, but Odo, again, with the teleport. And we'll be forced back here. And here comes Trashy from the side as well. What's going to happen? Twist Fate as well. They're going for a three-man gank here. The snare will miss from Trashy, but they'll have the gold card. Deadly Brother will be dropped. Odo picks that up. And now they're not going to be able to catch on uh, Carissas, but either way... Oh, no, they go for it! The Flash Stun comes out, they get the slow as well! And now Carissas being forced to run away from this one as fast as he possibly can, he will escape. And now pulling that Flash by uh, for Biv, unfortunately not working out too well, but now it's all up to We Will Fail to defend on this middle turret. There's not much he can do about it. Tidal Wave going to come out to knock him up to slow him down. Here comes uh, Herjarman from the side, good damage from the Colin. We'll pop the Ignite as well, and Alanir going to be dropped here. The ultimate coming out of Lulu and the Lantern, but it doesn't matter. Trashy's there, he picks up his fourth kill now. The Bubble! It connects on a 2 piece. People now Mazarin gonna get dropped as well. It's six to one here, 12 and a half minutes in. And so far, H2K looking like a very strong team. Now, if we think back to the actual qualifiers that came into this, into the central qualifiers, I believe it was. Let me just double check to make sure. Yes, it was. NIP beat H2K. It was a very close game, though. I think it was 17 to 15 in favor of uh, NIP. So, you know, we're looking at, you know, H2K, a very strong team in this game. NIP, they, they had a strong game against Unicorns of Love, but they just... Well, let's just say the teleport ram has really caught them off guard in that one, and they kind of got snowballed against. But I'm curious to see what's going to happen, uh, obviously, as the games go on, because we have Unicorns of Love go up against the winner of this. We could see NIP up against Unicorns of Love potentially again. If they do uh, beat, obviously, the loser of this one here. And well, with the way HDK are playing, I don't know if Unicorns of Love can beat that. They're having a strong early game. They're not letting any of this slip at all. And they're keeping the pressure on. They're, they're really starting to snowball a lot better than Unicorns of Love did. And Odo, with that Rod of Ages now completed, they start to stack that up here very, very quickly. One hundred and five to seventy-six between the eighty carries. So Jarman, play the Rune King now. Done. Deadly Brother only has the Phage, and now he's freezing the lane. Yes, he's going to need to do this. But the problem is, they need his wave clear. Uh, him and Lulu can wave clear very quickly if they're together it, to stop a middle lane push. And obviously, right now with HK up a lot of gold here, only 14 minutes in, they can afford to push. They have the ability to group up. They have Deadly Brother so far behind. I mean, he's what 1,400 gold behind right now. This is just free free time for HDK to really apply some map pressure. Pick up a couple of turrets if they want to. Alanir coming around for a gank on the top side here. Odo going to be going for a little bit of damage on the turret here, but he's being forced to back away. Nami going to be coming in. Wheel Fellow trying to get there as quick as he possibly can. Odo going to get back to him. We'll get healed up as well. Twist Fate coming in. The bubble connects yet again. That will be, though, Odo being taken down here, but they will pick up one kill. They're maybe going to pick up a second here. Wheel Fellow going to tank up the turret. Gold card comes in. 
And Alanir does get taken out. Double kill here for Biven. Now he's going to get hooked up here. And let's see what can happen. We have Trashy ulting from behind. They're going to catch him off guard here. This is such a bad spot. The bubble, he connects again. And Weewa Feather is on point here. Even Jarman coming up from the side with the Koa. And they pick up four kills that quickly. And that will be the top turret being taken down. They lose one man. They pick up four. That is for Biven now at 4-0-3. Trashy at 5-0-2. And, and Jarman now at 0-0-4. But look at Weewa Feather. He's participated in 80% of the kills so far. Currently with eight assists here and hasn't died a single time. His bubbles have been spot on. And H2K, they are snowballing this game out of control. Almost a 10k goal lead here, only 15 minutes in. And I remember there's a there's a stat that Joe and I used to talk about way back in the day before even LCS was around. Teams that typically have a 10% goal lead at 12 minutes in win the game. They have way more than they had way more than a 10% goal lead 12 minutes in the game. And right now. They keep this pace up here. They're looking at the winner's bracket final. The Dragon now back up. And H2K smartly going straight for here. So they net themselves four kills. They got a top turret. And they're getting Dragon again. 10k gold lead easily. And Ultra Virus right now. I mean, they're trying, I'm trying to think of a way to really get back in this bubble. Oh, we'll connect. We'll feel there might get dropped from this. He has no way to escape. There's no flash, but Trashy coming in. And that will be Cookie being taken out. We will feel that will finally fall. Deadly Brother picking that up here. Teleport going to be coming in as well. Carissas doesn't have ultimate to get away from this one. He doesn't have flash either. And now Trashy going a little bit too ham, a little bit too deep. But here comes the go card yet again. It will land on Deadly Brother. Here comes the Ultra out of Odo. Connects onto three people. They pick up one. They're looking for number two. The go card will come in onto Alanir. A double now picked up here for Jarman. And they're going to push in. Ultimate coming out to his fate. They're looking for another kill here. Carissa's trying to run from the side. Mazarin trying to run as well. And he gets taken down. Will he survive? He survives with a sliver of HP. Eight HP. And that will be for, Viv uh, for Biven, sorry, escaping that one. Three kills, zero deaths. They pick up the dragon. They picked up seven kills and one dragon and one turret so far. And I've only lost one death for it. 12k gold lead here, 16, 17 minutes in. And the skin out of hand. 2,800 gold here for uh, for Biven to spend in the mid lane. 1,000 to 1,100 for Hajarman. 1,600 for Odo. 1,800 for Trashy. And I feel like it's just a matter of time. They can afford to group up. They can afford to push on the turrets. They can afford to siege. They have amazing wave clear with Twist of Fate there and Gragas together. Not to mention for Biven being so far ahead. He has a death cap done at 17 minutes. Athenes, a death cap, and sword boots. All right, well, let's see if they can come back from this one. It's going to be very, very difficult. I'm, I'm still struggling to think of a way that they possibly can. I mean, they can't even catch them out. Cookie, well, he will have Flash over the wall here, but Odo, not going to chase him. But they don't have damage. Like, they have no damage. Deadly Brother is so far behind. Azarine, I mean, I was to say he wasn't that far behind, but then I looked at the CS yet again here. He's down 60 CS. I mean, if Azarine can 1v2, Odo coming in as well. Ultimate going to knock Corky back. Deadly Brother will be dropped as well. Odo picks that one up. So again, 15 to 3, 18 minutes in. And they're barreling down on these tier 2 turrets. They're allowing for Biven to push bottom. They don't even need him here with Odo, who's actually hasn't built full AP. He's building actually is tanky again uh, with the uh, Negatron Cloak here. But Jarman, play of the Ring King done. Pickaxe as well. He should have a decent amount of money to spend. Uh, only 700. But Trashy using the ultimate. Going to be coming in from the... Actually, I thought I heard the ultimate. Sorry, that was actually something else. But either way, they're just going to push in the middle. Push on this turret, turret. Bubble Cookie is not going to survive this one. He will be taken down here yet again. Odo looking for the damage. He'll not pick up the kill. That will go over to Jarman. But now 16 and 3, 18 and a half minutes in for Biven. Still pushing bottom. He gets a turret. They take down two turrets. Was that three turrets and nine kills for only one death now? I might even have a 20 minute surrender if it even gets to that point. Here we have a push coming onto the turret here. Corky if you're using all of his mana just to defend onto this uh, this push here. But right now, Dragon obviously not up for a while. Blue buff going to be stolen away here by uh, Forbidden. Again, what do you do to this? Like, the only way, and I hate to say this because, you know, you're not supposed to be so negative as a commentator, but the only way Ultravirus can come back from this is if... Is honestly if, if, if H2K just all disconnect and have to forfeit. Like, a team as experienced as H2K should not mess this up. Like, it is very difficult for that to happen. Either way, Deadly Brother built towards that Triforce. Has two-thirds done. He's only down about 20 CS, though, which is actually isn't too bad. But he's down three or two kills and seven assists. 
That's where it gets really deadly. BF Sword probably going to be picked up here. There it is, coming out of a Hajarman. Looks like he's going to go for that Affinity Edge next. And we're about to hit that 20 minute mark. And I actually want to see, are Ultraviolet going to surrender this one or are they going to stick around? And I would imagine they're still going to play. But it's a matter of time before, you know, HK is like, all right, well, they're not surrounding. Let's just push and win. Let's just push and end this. I want to turn my chat back on just so I can see if a surrender vote does come in. Okay. So Lich Bane done for, uh, for Biven. Missile Scepter now done for Odo. And we do have the Trinity Force finally coming in for Deadly. So finally gets a little bit of a power spike here, but it might just be a little bit too late. The Infinity Edge is honestly not far off here for his Jarman. And when that happens, he's going to be well, easily a full item ahead of his, uh, his, his counter opponent, or his, uh, his opponent. And he's already doing more damage as it is here. So I guess the, you know, the Lucian change, not a big deal <laughs> so far. We're still seeing a lot of Lucian played, a lot more than I've actually seen lately. Actually, in the Intel Extreme Masters, it was on a 4.10 patch, so we saw a lot of Kog'Maw's in that one. Not actually a lot of uh, Lucians, but right now you can see Ultra Virons are trying to get some sort of traction here. They're trying to get a couple of wards down in their own jungle. They they kind of have to at this point. They need to spot out exactly where they are, and well, Alanir, there's no escape in that one. He just gets dropped. There's a lot of pings on Dragon, there's a lot of pings on top lane. It looks like top will be the deciding factor of the, of the push. And they'll secure turret number six here. Again, like if they can't even get into their own jungle, they're missing their buffs, they're, they can't really face check towards Baron. They actually do have a pink ward still, luckily for them there. That's been there actually for a long time this game. But will it be spotted out? No, it's actually not. So they know they're doing Baron. But can they stop it? it looks like Deadly Brother is going to try to rush over here as quick as he can. Baron falling very quickly. Can they steal this? Super Lens will clear out that ward. There we go. Baron down to about 4k, 3k HP. Deadly Brother coming from the side of the ward does get cleaned up. And now down to 1500. He should be queuing in here just to get some vision. And will he get the steal? No, he's just going to straight up back. And that will be Baron now picked up. They didn't even have for Biven there. He was actually bottom lane pushing that one in. And now they realize, oh, well, they, they spotted us going for it. So they're going to clear that one out. Go back to base here. A lot of money to spend again for these teams. Or not for these teams, for H2K. Sorry, Ultra Fires on that one. And let's see how the push goes here. I want to see how Jarman. He can afford the Infinity Edge when he goes back. She's surprised he has it. Odo going to continue to show this top, and he still has the teleport up. Spirit Massage picked up here for Trashy as he went back, and the uh, Giant's Boat. And the push finally coming in, and look at that. Hajarman will eventually survive just by a slither of life. I guess he got healed up by Wheel of Failure there uh, last second, but they committed so much for that one. And Deadly Brother, will he was forced back, though. I believe Hajarman got focused out by Mazarin and Deadly there, and they actually almost picked it up, but he escapes, goes back, picks up an Infinity Edge, because why not? They're going to pick up a Dragon as well. And right now, HDK are just taking their time. And, you know, looking at how this game goes on, Looking at late game kind of compositions, I'd still easily give this over to H2K. Gragas gets stronger and stronger. Rengar is going to get tankier and eventually some damage. Twisted Fate's going to get even more ability power as he picks up his, uh, his Zonias. Jarman's going to get even tougher with that Infinity Edge and uh, completed Blade of the Rune King. And you have a Corky. I mean, yeah, his poke's going to be nice. Him and Lulu can do some really good wave clear. They have some really good poke. But they're never getting the opportunity to do it. And Trashy, he's pushing straight in here as well as for Biven. Popping the ultimate. They will force them back. Squeak. And Trashy not going to go for the engage here. Just going to sit there. For Biven still down at that bottom lane. Still shoving it in. You can see it's requiring all five people out of uh, Ultra Virus to defend this push. And now they can transition toward the bottom lane. That will be wheel filler. It won't, it won't get hooked in, but it won't matter in the end here. That turret down to half HP. It is falling so damn quickly, and that will be it. It will be dropped, and Mazarin getting caught out. Or something comes in right behind that as well. He's going to be dropped in just a few seconds. Jarvis picks up that one. Odo picks up the kill on the Deadly Brother, and that will be Cookie dropping as well here. And this looks like it's going to be the end of the game here. HGK going to pick up the inhibitor. They have Baron buff still. They have the region they need to secure the win. And there's a surrender vote coming in. That will be HGK advancing into the winner's bracket to go up against Unicorns of Love a little bit later on.
But this does mean Ninja Pajamas now have their opponent in the form of Ultra Virus. And again, I mean, let's be honest, that really wasn't a close game. Yeah, and no matter how we look at it, we had 6 0 and 7 for, uh, for Biven, 5 0 9 for Hajarman, 4 2 and 6 for Odo, 0 1 and 16 for We Will Failure. Over on the other side, one kill for Akryas, who was 1 1 1. You had 1 6 and 2 uh, Alunir, 0 5 Mazarine, 1 and 4 Deadly Brother, and 0 and 5 Cookie. So. Again, just just not even close. I, I I feel bad saying that, but it really wasn't. 21 to 3 at the end of the game, and they had a 22,000 gold lead. So in the meantime, we're going to do a quick little break here, but when we come back, it's going to be Ninja Pajamas going up against Ultravirus, and then after that game, we'll be going to the winner's brackets, or winner's side of the bracket to have Unicorns of Love play against H2K Gamers. So guys, we'll be back in just a few, and we'll see you then. <laughs> 